Welcome back to Cocktails and Classics. We've done it once. We've done it twice. Now it is thrice. It's Hubie Halloween. Or as Ben likes to call it, Hubie Hollow Threen. Woo! Uh, <laughs> uh, this week, it's just Ben and I. A little dad chat over here. We're back with for the third consecutive year um i feel like we've damned ourselves to this fate but uh we're back with hubie halloween uh a 2020 adam sandler netflix halloween comedy film zach made us watch this for some reason in 2020 and the tradition just is uh kept on where we have to watch it every year it currently sits at a 5.2 out of 10 on imdb it's directed by stephen brill Written by Tim Hurley and Adam Sandler. It stars Adam Sandler, Kevin James, Julie Bowen, Ray Liotta, Rob Schneider, Steve Buscemi, Maya Rudolph, Tim Meadows, uh, Shaq, Ben Stiller, Noah Schnapps in there. It, literally everybody. For this week's cocktail, it's not really a cocktail, but it does fit with the theme of the movie. Uh, and the movie, Julie Bowen's character's Violet Valentine offers Hubie some Chardonnay in the film uh so we're gonna have a nice glass of uh, chardonnay with the film uh and it might get you a little a little loose and you might start to spill your evil plans like hubie's mother uh (laughs) over the air of your favorite uh radio channel station station tch i feel like every time we watch this thing ben i uh am re-reminded of uh you know just what happens? Some of the bad humor. <laughs> there is definitely a lot of like good jokes in it. I feel like, but it is definitely uh, it's definitely not good. It's one of those movies that is like. So if I were with a like a group of people, and I knew we weren't really gonna pay attention to a movie, but like if you catch something, you might kind of get a chuckle. This is a great example of that. It's not a movie that one should seek out to just like, you know what sounds good tonight? Hubie Halloween. <laughs> it's, it would just, be a great Halloween party movie. Yes. Yes. I think you just, you know, you, you turn this on and then I feel like it's one of those movies where like you'd probably towards the end of the party find like five or six people legitimately watching it yeah um but most of the people are like walking by and seeing a clip and they might get a little bit of a chortle or they're just gonna think it's absolutely dumb and just keep walking um i don't know i was definitely cracking up at points but it is definitely one of those movies where uh it's very chortle heavy it's like a that was so stupid. I have to, I have to somehow cope with that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great way to put the humor of this movie. Is that it's it's so dumb, it's funny. Which, like, I mean, I haven't watched. Maybe I need to go back and watch some of the old Sandler movies because maybe they're all like that. But I don't know. This one is just so. And and obviously he doesn't have a great record with the Netflix ones because a lot of the Netflix movies I've heard are pretty bad. But um, man, it's just like uh, I feel like they're they're like let's swing as many times as we can. Sometimes we'll hit and and it'll be a good joke, and then sometimes we'll swing and no one's gonna laugh at this. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it, where, like, you're watching, and there's there's times where something comes up, and I'm just like, that's, that's legitimately funny. Like, they did a good job with that. And then it gets to, like, the Rob Schneider and, um, oh my god, Steve Buscemi sitting in the, in the police station, and Rob Schneider's like, huh, I'm peeing now. It's like, really? This is his whole character is just a bunch of pee jokes? It's like, um, you didn't need it. Welcome like it, to Rob Schneider's career. career the movie, 
But the mo- like, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, man, this Adam Sandler movie would be funnier if he just decided to stop letting Rob Schneider be a part of it. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's unnecessary and it's not funny. But then you get to things where, like, the mom's t-shirts, where all of them are hilarious. Um... <laughs> You're within farting distance, boner donor. Uh, I kayaking that. gets me wet. <laughs> God. What's the, what's the like her friends they got the one that's like uh, it's not gonna lick itself or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just those those type of jokes in the movie they hit they hit really well. I feel like Adam Sandler's just ridiculous acting in terms of how like over the top he acts when he's frightened is funny to me it's hilarious i enjoy it <laughs> i i do i love in the beginning when he, when he gets scared and flips over the car or no he gets his eyes with with violet and flips over the car and then he's just like oh, pretending yeah. to be one of the halloween like displays like that's good it's classic sandler it's physical he's just doing something outlandish like i i can I can get behind that. But then it just gets into some of the jokes where it's like, you didn't need to do this. Yeah. I feel like, uh, you, you loved last year. If I remember correctly, you love the one where he like, when he first gets home and then, uh, the thing like scares him as soon as he walks in the door and he throws his helmet, like knocks the head <laughs> off of it. Yeah. I feel like I remember you loving that one. Oh, I mean, just some of the ones, like, it's just, I don't know. I enjoyed when he gets, like, frightened, and then I love what... <laughs> Breaks his window? <laughs> no, I think the best one is at this school, when he's talking about donating the candy to the homeless shelter, and the little kid dressed as a zombie is like, is that where you live? And he's like, oh, no. And then he looks at the kid, and he just screams, burn it, burn it with fire. <laughs> like, that's... Jesus. That is... It's to me that's classic Sandler. It's the it's the Sandler humor that I grew up on and enjoy. But then I feel like it just gets to the point where it's like how how dumbed down can we be in this movie? And it's at that point where I'm like, uh, you lost me. I don't know if I uh, looked at this at all last year, but Hubie Halloween was nominated for six awards. Are they um, all Razzies? Uh, it was nominated for Worst Actor at the Razzies uh, in 2021. Worst Screen Combo, Adam Sandler and his grating simpleton voice. Uh, <laughs> and Worst Remake, Ripoff, or Sequel. I don't... I, I would like to see the explanation on that one. Maybe it's because it's part of the universe where, like, he brings in... Oh, yeah. Like, the old lady the from... Hell. Yeah, and the old lady from um, Billy Madison, which I think she, rewatching it this time around, I think she had two of the best jokes in the movie. I think the, when the Hubie, n- the old lady, the old, like, remember in Billy Madison, they go to the farm and the old, like, Amish lady is like, if peeing your pants is cool, I'm Miles Davis. <laughs> I, I know that joke, but I, I have so not that, seen Billy Madison in so, like years. So that old lady is the same one. So uh, Hubie hands her the stack, hands the like Amish looking lady the stack of uh, word searches to give the kids. Oh, And she's yes. like, oh, you're oh. so thoughtful. Thank you. And she just turns around and throws him in the garbage. It was just so, just so good. The fact that she's just like, oh, thank you so much. You're so thoughtful. And then you, because they don't focus on it, it's not, it's, you just kind of see it over Violet's shoulder where she just tosses him. And then later on, uh, after Violet threatens to beat up the lady whose the cat lady Hubie rescued, cat. she goes, I'm, I'm asexual. But I can't remember what the joke is. She's like, but that's got me hot and bothered. Or it's just something ridiculous. I, I think she says something along the lines of, I'm asexual, but that chick's making me horny or something. <laughs> Maybe that was it. Yeah. Just ridiculous, but just also just a great, like, just because it's out of, it's out of nowhere. Like, it shouldn't be, 
that that those parts I enjoyed. Like I said, there's parts of this movie where it's like, man, if you would have just if someone would have told them less, hey, less is more. I feel like this movie would be thought of a lot more, a lot more, I guess, well regarded. Yeah, I feel like it's uh, it's definitely um, I I don't know it's it's like a a family it's like a family film first and foremost, but uh, it does push the push the uh, envelope a little bit with some of the uh, you know boner donor jokes, which like. Maybe our family films back in the day had that sort of stuff. I don't quite remember. I'm guessing they I mean, probably I guess it's, did, and it's we PG-13. just thirteen. Yeah, I mean, it's. I feel like it's a movie that's meant like. It's meant to be watched either with a family when it's when they're young enough that they're not going to understand stuff, or you have to wait till they're old enough that it it all kind of makes sense. Uh, I was looking, scouring the internet, and I saw uh, this Reddit discussion thread on our movies. I think I figured out the process. This is not this planet on Reddit. He says, I think I figured out the process. Netflix gives Sandler a blank check and a one-word suggestion out of a hat. They give him a year to make a movie, but he forgets about it until the last week. He doesn't panic. Sandler hops on IMDb, picks a few names at random for cameos. He then unlocks his basement and lets out Rob Schneider, Kevin James, and Steve Buscemi. They shoot on location somewhere with balmy weather and cheap labor laws. They crack it out in a few days and then hand it to the editors to salvage what they can. Sandler attempts to wrangle his captive trio back into their cages. Netflix upload it without watching. They know he's good for it. And hand him another check. Sandler draws out another suggestion. This one is astronaut and immediately forgets about it. The cycle continues. <laughs> it seems so fitting. I just love that they go where there's where there's cheap labor laws. Uh yeah, I just this man. The thing that irks me is that we made a pact that this would be a thing we do every year. <laughs> And now it's just us two. <laughs> now it's just the two of us. You know, you know. I feel like there's. I'm. I'm a little. I'm a little let down. It's just us. We're like. We're like Hubie and his thermos. You know. Yeah. We can't be separated. Nope. <laughs> Jesus. Um. The, the fucking part where where. Uh, Kevin James is like talking about, uh, oh, we're gonna get you on to the A A U U or whatever, and then like he be like huffing his inhaler and he's like, <sighs> so fucking stupid. Yeah, like I said, there's there's parts of this movie that I feel like are like, man, they did a good job. They this this hit, good this hit, and then they do things where I'm like. Why? Why why did you even include this? Did you just really need to fill the time so your thought was uh, we we gotta like otherwise I just don't understand. I don't I don't understand where it was like I know we have to do it this way. And like I said, I can't shit on the movie that much because there were times I definitely was laughing out loud at, at things going on in it there there's parts of the movie that are legitimately funny i just wish they'd cut out the parts of the movie that weren't funny <laughs> it's hard to talk about this movie for another year without it just seeming like it's the same conversation but yeah i i do feel like every year i end up watching this movie I enjoy it a little bit more than I did before. And I don't know if I want that, I, though. Like, it's it's kind of like Stockholm Syndrome, in a sense. Like, where you start to, uh, like, love your captor. 
and Hubie Halloween is my cat. You know, that is a but very like... fitting comparison. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's one of those things where uh, after the first year watching it, obviously I didn't know what I was in for. So it was, it was. Yeah, Zach, Zach was just like, guys, we have to watch this. this movie. We have to Hubie watch Halloween. this Sandler movie. It's like, okay, fine, whatever. Not a problem. And it was like, why the fuck did we watch this? And then last year it was like, well, we'll watch it together. So it's, you know, it's at least a bit more enjoyable. Okay. That's fine. That's, that's fine. It's fitting. We, we can do that. It, it might. And like, yeah, it was, it was a, it was, it was more enjoyable to watch. The movie's not better. It's just more fun to watch with other people that you can laugh at the absurdity of what you're watching. Oh, this yeah. year, there was not really a sense of like worry or dread that this was coming up, and that terrifies me. Like there was no like, oh I, god, we have to like, watch, we have to watch Hubie Halloween. It was like, all right, well, when are we watching it? My worry is like, it's going to just become less and less of a chore to the point where I'm just like, yeah, it's just a Halloween tradition. We watch it. That's what I was about to ask. I was like, did we unknowingly add this into a Halloween movie repertoire? Like, I don't know if we said the first year we were like, yeah, you know, definitely play this every Halloween. Like, are we, we, we just put it upon ourselves now at this point. And it's like, yeah, Halloween tradition, gather around, gather the kids. Grayson got yeah, his Grayson first got viewing. To, you know, Grayson got to watch a little old. bit of it before he, before he fell asleep. Like, God, next next Halloween, it's is Isla gonna be there? It's just gonna be, it's gonna become the family tradition. Well, and that's you like know. the biggest <laughs> thing of like some of the movies that we've watched. I feel like especially Christmas movies or Halloween movies, where it's like okay, like Rocky Horror is one that I I would throw into like I I would watch this almost every Christmas or every Halloween. Probably the same thing, especially when. Grayson's a little bit older and, and watching movies and that with me like Hocus Pocus. It's a easy enough die hard. Well, I mean, that's a given that was that didn't need. I didn't need to wait for the podcast for that to become a, a Christmas tradition. But yeah, I feel like this is one that's just going to be eventually like next year. It's just going to be like, yeah, OK, well, I'm watching this movie again. And it's just going to be like it's just going to be one of those things that you just you do it. So it's not really a big to do in terms of worrying about it or being worried when you have to do it. It's just, oh, yeah, we're watching it It's that time of year. You know, when we put it in the chat and Zach was like, oh, man, is it that time of year again? It, yeah, that's it. That's pretty much the feeling now. Hey, heads up. It's that time of year again. It's time to watch Hubie. Back to this earlier thought of, I don't think I ever looked at this. Uh, Hubie Halloween was nominated for two Kid Choice Awards. Favorite movie actor in favorite movie. And then this has got to be a meme. The Bruin Film Society at UCLA nominated it for Best Picture. That has to be. You know for a fact those were <laughs> those were kids that were just like, you know, it would be super fucking How hilarious. How could we destroy this system? You know, it would be super fucking hilarious. <laughs> what if we nominate and make sure Hubie Halloween is is up for Best Movie? Yeah, you know that was that was some. That, let's be honest. It would be like us in college. We would have had that idea. Yeah. We would have had the idea, <laughs> and then we would have started talking to anyone that we knew about it. And then at some point, we would have made up flyers and put flyers up. Have you seen this man? We called... Hubie Dubois. We, <laughs> we called our friend Brock Steve just to piss him off. To the point where he was like, stop calling me Steve. <laughs> and we knew it made him so mad that we made we made a Steve Twitter account 
a Steve Facebook page, and then we took a picture that he had posted of him with a shitty mustache, put it on a flyer, and just put, call me Steve, and we hung them all over campus. And I thought, no one's going to take this, totally no one's going to take that. this seriously. The next year, we're talking to someone, and we brought up the whole Steve thing, and this person goes, okay, the first time she found out who Brock was was during this orientation event. She's like, yeah, he introduced himself as Brock. And I'm like, that's not Brock. That dude's name is definitely Steve. And it was at that point that I realized it actually worked. So, yeah, I feel like I feel like, <laughs> let's be honest, if we were in college and there was a thing where Eastern let you nominate movies to like win an award, we would 100% have watched this. And then gone, we have to nominate it. We have to make sure it wins. And we would have gotten as many people as possible to vote for this movie until it won. God, I feel now I'm just like, I'm just picturing it all. Like we could have made like an Oscars, like for your consideration, like QB <laughs> Halloween trailer. Oh my God. It would have been amazing. Like just put in serious effort into the meme and. That's the thing is when you're in college and you have so much free time, like you can really just go head over he uh, heels and like devote time and effort into a meal. Oh yeah, to really just like sell it. Yeah, you can you can put the work in to just be like, you know what, this is really dumb, but people will enjoy it. So let's just, you know, if we're gonna do it, let's do it a hundred percent, and. Yeah, it's like this podcast. Like, it's just all dedication to one big meme. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, and the dedication lasted about <laughs> about three or about two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're still here. We're, st we st we're still here. Still alive, but I'm barely <laughs> breathing. <laughs> Just watched you be Halloween that I don't believe in. I want to ap apologize to the to the people who are listening to this because I do know that you know we've been I, as as life events happen and uh, we get older and have more responsibilities. Finding times to to watch the movies and, and record and everything. So I, I do feel bad that it's like, oh, it's it's been two weeks since we put out an episode. Here's a 20-minute UV Halloween breakdown of why we fucking hate this movie still. It's, oh, my it's, God. It's, no, it's basically next just like, oh... Oh, they released a new episode. And then it's like, oh, it's 20 minutes. Oh, fuck, it's another Hubie Halloween. And it's just us like, there's not really anything to say. We're basically we're basically spending 20 minutes saying absolutely nothing about the movie. <laughs> All right, next next year, the prepare everyone. Next year, uh, I'm going to prepare a 30-minute <laughs> presentation on why Hubie Halloween is a cinematic masterpiece. And in the whole podcast will just be me presenting <laughs> my my doctoral thesis on I want to provide an an antithesis. <laughs> and I want to find I, I want us, if we're still going in a year, to hopefully have some sort of it, it'll never happen. We'll never have clout. I wish we would. Because that would be my biggest goal, would be to have some sort of celebrity, <laughs> some sort of celebrity <laughs> have to judge between you and I's theses about whether or not UV <laughs> Halloween is a masterpiece or just a giant turd Netflix made. <laughs> I will bring, I will, I will prepare my uh, PowerPoint presentation and uh. <laughs> I will, I will come prepared. I will, uh, what do you spend like the I'm fucking spend handouts? all October like... doing fucking research? <laughs> my argument is gonna be I watched oh the movie God. and it's bad. I'm gonna be like, uh, as you can tell within the mise en scene, um, <laughs> Adam Sandler and uh, fuck, what's the guy's name? Steve Brill. Now, if you look here, 
yes, yeah, Steve. <laughs> In the 59th minute of the film, uh, Violet Valentine reaches for this bowl of soup. And that's to signify <laughs> the childhood hardships that Hubie Halloween ha- or Hubie Dubois had to go through. God damn it. I'm looking forward to it, but at the same time, it means I have to look forward <laughs> to watching this movie again. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. Oh, my God. I don't know if my heart's in it. Oh, my God. Oh. God. All right. All right. Let's let's. Well, I wanted yeah, to bring talk up about where we were at <laughs> and the growth. We've experienced right. growth. If, if if there's been one thing this podcast has been good for, it's 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 human growth. It's personal growth. Maybe on the thoughts of Hubie Halloween. <laughs> Maybe Hubie Halloween is just actually, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um. Not necessarily an aphrodisiac, but um, you, you know, like know. it. Uh, I don't know where you're going with this. Gets, I'm trying to track it, my man. Gets but. The, it gets <laughs> it gets the juices flowing, you know, because uh, since watching Hubie Halloween twice now, um, there has been two children uh, created. Oh, that's <laughs> on this box. That's what you're thinking. That's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. Th- I'm, if you're, I'm thinking. If you're thinking, you know, if you're if you're looking to get, if you're in the looking mood, to start a family, you're trying to <laughs> <laughs> turn turn your attention to Netflix in the comedy <laughs> stylings of Adam and Sandler. <laughs> yeah, if Happy Madison and Hubie Halloween is is uh, good at one thing, it's it's creating families. <laughs> uh. Ten out of ten. No, oh, dear God. <laughs> I just remember, you remember the old commercials that would come on television, like when we were kids, and it would be like, like slow jams or whatever, and it'd just be like old classic R and B songs, it'd be like uh, baby making music, you know, <laughs> like that's, uh, it's like, uh, just an infomercial, and it's like. Hubie Halloween and like Happy Gilmore, just just Happy Madison movies, like trailers in the background. Oh, it's got to be the next thing that comes out, right? Just a a clip of of it, Adam Sandler movies with no sound, but like just really intense saxophone music over the top of it. It's, it's Hubie, it's, it's Hubie barf is, barfs riding his bike after eating the eggs. It's just this sensual saxophone music oh dear god all right ben uh so before we uh close out i wanted to uh go over our where we started and where we're at now with our hubie halloween um so first time uh watching hubie halloween it uh it made it into our 2021 bottom movies list um and is in fact the first viewing on the worst movies of all seasons at a 2.88 collective ben you gave it a two out of ten uh cam gave it a 3.5 i gave it a three and zach gave it a three cameron was you were the really the highest yeah holy christ I'm surprised Zach was not the highest. Yeah, I think Cam went before, and then Zach at the like went last, and we were like, "All right, give us the ten out of 10. And he was like, "Yeah, no, like it's you know, it's, <laughs> it's pretty it's bad." It's a three. <laughs> and Cam was just like, "No, <laughs> no, now I'm the one who loves TV all week. I look like the guy who uh, loves the Sandler verse." <laughs> and then. uh as Hubie Halloween has caused us to lose members, uh, Cameron was not there the second year. Uh, uh, ben, you gave it a four, so you're still the lowest. I gave it a five. Zach gave it a six. So we we Zach doubled his. You doubled yours, uh, and I I bumped mine up two points. So you know we we did watch it together that time, so it was it was more enjoyable, I think, more a little more bearable because the first year we watched it separately, and then came get it uh, 
came together to record. Um, so Ben, what did you think the the thrice the Hubie Hollow Threen viewing? You know, it's not good. It's not the movie's bad. Um, do I still think it's too a uh, too bad? No, since that first uh, since that first time doing Halloween, I think we've done since then two Aprils, right? Uh, yes. Oh God, yes. I've seen some dog shit movies now. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it gives you a little bit more of a barometer when you have to watch Shrek retold. Um, oh, shrimp, shrimp retold or whatever the weird religious. Oh God. <laughs> movie. Yeah. Yeah. After watching Oof. that, the, the abomination that was that movie, uh, you start to realize that maybe your your grading scale, what you thought was a zero, is no longer a zero. <laughs> I don't know. Do, do we need to bring back Food Fight? Because, oh, that, I feel like that I, one's still rough. Okay, I think Food Fight was still better than the 2025. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you're the group that's been painting on the Jesus fish? Yeah. Can I join Great you? Great dialogue. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. one, how did you find us based off our blank Jesus fish? Oh, um, yeah, so I think, I don't know if it's as much that I think QB Halloween's gotten better or my idea of what's bad is just gone further down. <laughs> like, the idea of how bad it can get is really sunk. So maybe it's it's not as bad as I thought. I don't know. I, I'm torn. A part of me is thinking just to leave it at a four. Um, it's What's not a, the other part of you saying to drop to drop it to a three. <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh, I was what? expecting you to be like to to bump it to a seven. No, no, I don't enjoy it that much. <laughs> um, I think I'm just. I'm becoming more numb to it. Here's the... <laughs> Here's the thing I will say. And this... I we I brought this up to you. So after... After your wedding. Congratulations. Um, oh, thanks. So a, a couple people were staying at an Airbnb. We were invited to go back. Have a couple drinks. Hang out. Uh, by the time we got there, there were maybe four people who were still awake. Um, that were staying at the at the Airbnb, uh, and I don't know who it was. I can't remember if it was Jared or Forrest that had said they hadn't seen it, and so then it was just like, well, now we have to turn it on. So I remember watching have it, to, of course, and seeing somebody watch it for the first time. I think was so much more enjoyable than actually watching the movie. Seeing someone just see the outlandish things, but you do realize when a joke hits that you're like, yeah, okay, it's not just me. Like, this this actually is a funny part of the movie. But when the joke... I'm not crazy. Yeah, but when the joke doesn't hit, you're also just like, you find it funny because you know the joke doesn't hit, and now you have to watch <laughs> someone else suffer through it. <laughs> but I... Like I said, there's parts of this movie that are... It has the makings of something that that could be good. It's just that I feel like they did too much. They needed they needed less sauce. Um, do I think this movie's an average movie? No. So immediately it has to go under five. <laughs> do I think it's a zero? No. It's nowhere near the zero movies that we've watched. So automatically it's got to be at that three range. Um, I just think, and, and I think it's the difference between watching it with people or watching it by yourself. I think if you're watching this movie by yourself, it's like a three, maybe lower. Watching it with people where like you can kind of sit and, and chuckle and 
kind of point out the absurdity and have someone there other than yourself to just be like, you know, for example, there's p times where something dumb happens and you're just like, why the fuck am I watching this? But there's a reason. You're watching it with your friend for a podcast. <laughs> when you're watching it by yourself, your thought is, why am I watching this? And then you're still watching it going, seriously, why don't I just turn this off and walk away? <laughs> um... But I, I do think it has enough funny bits to keep it afloat. So I, I think I'm going to leave it. I think I'm going to let it stay put at a four. Like we said, um, it's becoming a Stockholm Syndrome-esque movie for us. Uh, um, it's slowly growing on me every year that we watch this uh, this turd. Um, I'm going to stay at the five. Uh, as much as it hurts me, as as much as I want to drop it down, I think this movie is, it's fun. It's funny at parts. Uh, and I think, I think one of my biggest detractors is the fucking Adam Sandler voice. <laughs> but like, even that, I'm like, well, I know like all the fucking quotes by now. I feel like at this point, so uh, it's it's gonna become like Harry Potter level to me, where I can just quote the whole movie when something happens. Um, by the end of this whole thing, um, I don't know why it's it's become a Halloween tradition for us, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Throw it, throw it on at a throw it on a Halloween party and. Uh, you know, you can you can razz on it a little bit if you want to. You can laugh at the jokes that it hit. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's it's still not great. It's still kind of a turd. But some of the cameos and some of the some of the bits still crack me up. I will say, the the whole shack scene and the uh and the DJ booth is just so so funny with this like wife. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Um. Yeah, five, 5 out of 10 is a perfect uh, rating, I think, for this thing. And I think that's what it is on IMDb, if I remember correctly. What did I say? A 5.2. 5 if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to rate and subscribe. Uh, check us out on Instagram, at Cocktails and Classics Pod. We'll be back with some normal movies. But please, come back next year for the Hubie Halloween 4 uh doctoral thesis on why it is a cinematic masterpiece and Ben's antithesis on why it is a massive uh, turd. You best believe there's going to be a Hubie 4. <laughs> there's... Dude, we're we're, what, we're what committed. Is... What podcast will, will, will watch Hubie Halloween three times? No one. So you better believe we're committed to a fourth. Is it? You think there's a world record somewhere in there? I mean, like most times watching a Hubie Halloween, mate, I I feel like you'd have to specify for a podcast because like, oh, okay, because Zach's watched There's this like movie some without sicko. doing a podcast about it <laughs> so many times. You think he's over ten at this point? I don't know because I haven't talked to him to find out how many times he's watched it so far this year. Share us with your friends and family. Leave a review wherever you listen. And a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, watch responsibly.